united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Hi everyone, um, my name is Sarah Garcia. It's nice to be with you all today. Um, I'm filling in for Pastor Bobby. He's usually here at the 11.30, or 11, sorry, 11 o'clock United. Um, but today he asked me to come. He had some prior engagements. I'm sorry if you're expecting him. You can just imagine his face right here with a higher voice. Um, but I'm so excited to be here with you all today. He asked me yesterday if I'd be willing to come. And it's so cool because I used to help him maybe when I was like 17 or 18 before moving away to college. Um, I used to come and like help him with the music and stuff. So it's just funny how life can be a full circle sometimes <laughs> um, just to be back here again. But today we're going to be talking about, you know, November is coming up soon. Um, I know you're like, we just started October. <laughs> I feel like all the months are passing super fast. So I feel like one day it's October 1st, the next day it's October 30th, you know. <laughs> so in a way, November is coming pretty soon. Um, and we have elections coming up. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys today about why Christians should be voting um, and how to vote. How do we figure out who to vote for? Because it's kind of like, well, who is like the good option or like, what do I do here? Because sometimes even we just think of voting for the president, but we don't think like there's so many other positions that we're going to have to vote for too. I remember when I first started voting, <laughs> I was just excited that I was finally going to be able to do it. And so I went to like the ballot or whatever, and I was like voting, but I only knew who was running for president. So this is probably bad, but I literally would just like click the name that I liked the most. So I was like, oh, it's a pretty name. <laughs> and I was very not educated when it came to who to vote for. Um, but I think it's very good to educate yourself and to see who we should vote for. What do they stand for? Does it line up with the Bible? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you are hearing about politics and you're like, oop, change the channel. No, don't go. <laughs> I promise it's not going to be, um, this isn't going to be an endorsement of any candidate. I'm not even going to tell you who to vote for. I just want to go over um, why us as Christians should be voting and how to look for who to vote. We're not going to be endorsing or saying any names here. Um, but as far as Christians, why should we be voting? Um, I have a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say that well, religion and politics do not mix. Like, I don't need to be involved in all of that. That's just messy. It's full of people that are lying, blah, blah. Um, but I, and although I think that is true to a certain extent because we're citizens of God, for citizens of the kingdom of God, first and foremost. And so I believe that he calls us to love everyone, um, whether they have a different opinion than you or not. And I think sometimes politics brings out the ugly <laughs> in friends um, because you're not always going to agree with each other. But... I do believe that we are called to vote because God has called us to be stewards of every single thing that he has given us, um, whether it is your marriage, your kids, your finances, your job, um, even like your talents, whatever he has given you, whatever he has privileged with, whatever he has blessed you with, we have the responsibility to be good stewards. What does that mean? To take care of what he's given us, to um, help it to increase and not just stay like they're stagnant. And so I believe that as Christians, we have been given um, such a great privilege of being born here in the U.S. where we have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom to bear arms. Do all of these get used in the best way at times? No, because it's imperfect people who have access to all of these things. But they are such a privilege that I know people in other nations would really love to have like freedom of religion there's so many people that have to go underground for church um, or they can't really talk about God openly and so if we are valuing what God has given us what our nation was founded upon um, to be one nation under God then it's not it's our job to do something about it to not just stay still um, and complain about how our nation is like going down and they're going away from God but let's not just um, complain or let's not just pray about it, but let's put action to our words. Let's put action to our prayers. Let's do our part and actually make a difference because I know some people are like, well, why should I even vote? Like, I'm just one vote. I feel like my vote doesn't even count. 
your vote does count. In fact, it gets counted with all the other votes. And if the church were to unite and to choose, okay, we are going to be proactive. We're going to see our government um, get changed for the better. We're going to see, we're going to put people in place that are going to fight for the right things, that are going to have the right causes, um, that support the right um, biblical things. Then we could actually see all of our votes join together and make a difference. Um, I always tell people who are like complaining to me about stuff that's happening with like politics or a president or whatever, um, I'll be like, so did you vote? And then they're like, uh, no, I don't really like voting. And I'm like, well, to be honest, it sounds mean, but I don't really think you can complain if you didn't really do your part to um, make a difference, you know? And so I feel like it's super important if we're going to see this nation come back to be a nation under God, that us as Christians steward what we have and do what we can so that not only can we have a nation that's under God, but that we can make it a better place for our kids and our children's children. We live um, as Christians, and well, a lot of people in the world, but we live generationally. We don't just live for ourselves today, but we wanna make it a better place for our kids in the future. Um, and so that's why I believe it's super important that Christians are voting, that we are seeing um, activity within the churches of going and choosing to find biblical people to vote for. That's the second thing that I wanted to talk to you all about was voting for, looking for biblical um, values in the platform of who you're voting for. Like I said, it's very important to educate yourself um, and to see what people are standing for. I think right now there's a lot of confusion and a lot of people getting driven by culture, um, especially people my age. It's not very... Um, a lot of people my age don't necessarily agree with me on things because it's so culture driven right now. Um, but I believe that as Christians, the Bible tells us in Romans, sorry, let me unlock my phone. In Romans 12 two, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. There's um, so much going on right now and so much that could sway us um, in whatever, direc whatever direction that we choose to go. But first and foremost, if we are citizens of the kingdom, we need to submit ourselves to God. Um, before I'm anything, before I am Republican, Democrat, um, whatever, U.S. citizen, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. And although I have freedom to choose who I want to vote for, when I asked God to come into my heart, when he purchased me for a very high price, I submitted my freedom to him. I submitted my decisions to him. I submitted um, my wants and my desires to him. I gave it all to him because he's our king and he's ultimately the one who reigns above everything. <laughs> and he knows what the future holds. So he knows um, He knows what we're supposed to do. Like he knows the correct decisions for us. Um, how many of you know that none of us expected this pandemic? None of us knew that this was coming, but I don't think it shocked the Lord. I don't think he was like, whoa, a pandemic happened? What are we going to do? Like he wasn't um, in heaven just like in confusion, like, oh, what are we going to do? How am I going to help my people? No, he knew it was coming and he was preparing us for such a time as this. And when you allow yourself to be submitted to him, your opinions, your desires, your decisions, he helps you and he leads you and he lights the path for you to walk in correctly and he helps you so that your will is according to his will that's good and perfect and acceptable. Um, he keeps you on the right path so that way we can be um, going f towards where he wants us to be. Um, I believe a lot of people my age, um, it's kind of a funny time that we're in right now not just the pandemic, but just like our age group. Because as teenagers, yeah, you start to like think for yourself a little bit, um, but you're still considered a kid. And so that's what my youth struggle with a lot. Like they wanna start thinking for themselves, but also like they're still a kid. And so they're like, oh, like what am I, what do I do? Like I wanna do things on my own. <laughs> but once you turn 18 and on, it's kind of like you can start thinking for yourself, start forming what your worldview is, start you, if you go to college or anything like that, like you start having the freedom to think for yourself. And I have a lot of friends who have kind of uh, gotten off track a little bit. 
they loved the Lord, like, and I'm, I'm sure they still do, but they kind of let that excitement of freedom get the better of them, and they started just, like, doing whatever they could that, because they didn't feel, like, controlled anymore, <laughs> um, and it's gotten them into some rough situations, but I've learned that it's wisdom to know that even though I have this newfound freedom, even though I have the right to vote for whoever I vote for, even though I have the freedom to make my own decisions and to choose what I think is right and what I think is wrong, I want to always submit that freedom to the Lord. I want him to tell me what he sees right and what he sees wrong. I want him to tell me where I should go. I want him to give me um, the next step because I want to live a life that's pleasing to him. I want to be, I want my life to just be like a sweet fragrance to him all the time. And I think it's so smart to submit yourself to him. The Bible says that even though you have freedom, don't use your freedom to cover up evil. Don't let your freedom um, be an excuse to like have all this other stuff, but use your freedom for good as a servant of God. We are his servants. We are here on the earth. And when we said, God, here I am, use me however you want, that included your opinions, your mindsets, um, uh, your way of viewing the world, we're literally giving it all to him and we're saying, God, you bought me for a very high price. So Lord, I believe that you can do better with my life than I can. How many of you know that he can do so much better with our life, with our city, with our nation, so much better than we can. And so it's so good to submit ourselves to him, submit how we're going to vote and to look for biblical values in our candidates. Um, the reason I say this is because the Bible um, is supposed to be a lamp unto our feet. It's supposed to guide us in the way that we should go so that we can be walking in the will of God. And in the will of God, there's covering, there's protection, there's blessing. Um, there's so much within his will. And so um, we need to be looking at who we are voting for and seeing what they stand for. And if what they're standing for is leading us in the will of God or it's leading our nation farther away. Like, for example, let's talk about, I have this here. It's um, an election guide. And so it doesn't tell you who to vote for. It just tells you who the candidates are that are running, um, some of the main issues, and whether they support or oppose it. Um, it's really cool. I think it was the Hispanic action network that let it out or maybe they're just the ones that like officially published it um no yeah it was by the hispanic action network <laughs> and so these are actually available um our church is located at 820 north rainer we're officially going to be printing these out in color like actual flyers um this tuesday they'll be available i believe if everything goes right with the printer <laughs> um but you are able to um, see this online, I believe, and then we are going to give it to the station if they'd like to make copies. But it's such a good tool to use because it lets us know what every candidate stands for. Um, and so we will be back <laughs> right after this moment. I believe that there is a music video that's coming up, um, but I will see you right after the break. God bless you. Hi. Good to be back with you guys. Um, I just want to mention before we keep going, if anyone does need any prayer, feel free to call the station at 915-532-8518. That's 915-532-8518. We'd be happy to pray with you, to hear your prayer requests, and just to join in agreement um, that God's will, perfect will, be done in your life. Um, before we went on the break to the music video, we were talking about this election guide. Um, that there's available. Um, our church will officially have it this Tuesday. We're located at 820 North Rainer. Um, but I just believe it's really good because it has all of the main issues here on the left. And then you can see um, what the presidential candidates uh, believe about that issue, what the U.S. Senate believes about that issue, um, congressional, district. Um, it has all of those important things for us. And so just going back to it is so important to vote biblically. Um, going with, I think, one of the main things that people look at. Um, if we're going to vote biblically, then I think we need to vote for candidates who are against abortion. Um, we believe that the Bible says that thou shalt not kill, and I know a lot of people believe that the baby is not yet alive when it's in the womb, that's not even a human yet, but we know that God knew them even before they were starting to be created, that he's known them since the womb, that they are already a life that God has a purpose and a plan and a destiny for. And I believe that 
if we're going to um, talk about how sad it is that like in New York how they're able to abort up until the very end of the pregnancy um, when I heard that I literally I just started crying like um, my sister had just had my niece Sayla and I thought like what if she had chosen last minute that like um, she didn't want to have her and I love my niece so much like <laughs> I don't have any kids so she is my pride and my joy um, and I remember just being there I was still in college at the time and just crying in my dorm room because I just felt such um, a heavy grievance. I felt such of the Lord's burden on my heart because um, it's so good to pray the prayer and ask God, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. Show me what's important to you. Show me um, what you love and help me to love what you love and hate what you hate, Lord. Just give me a heart like yours. And I believe that his heart is for the children so much. It's all over the Bible. Jesus literally said, let the little children come to me. They're so important for him. And so that's one, That's just one example of how to look at if a candidate lines up biblically. Um, that way they are leading us in the will of God. We don't want to be against the will of God. And so you may have a candidate that goes with everything that you say socially, like you um, want equality in this area and justice in this area. But if you see that they are pro-passing um, late-term abortion in like all the rest of the U.S., I would think twice before voting for that candidate because that that would break the Lord's heart, and so it breaks my heart. You know, if it grieves the Lord, then it grieves me, and I want my decision to be pleasing to Him. That's why I'm saying, even though we have the freedom to vote for who we want to vote for, it's so good to submit that freedom to Him and say, God, you please show me who I need to vote for, whether it is on the stance of abortion, whether it is on the stance of marriage between be, being between one man and one woman whether it is um on the stance of um federal health care that's on here the iran nuclear deer a uh, deal sorry <laughs> dear um police funding any of that things we should look at and say god what's your heart on this issue what's your heart on this matter because i know what culture is telling me but i want to see what your word is telling me because your word, like I said, is the lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I want to read it. I want to know it. I want it engraved on my heart. And that's what I want to walk in. That's what I want to make my decisions out of. God, who do you want me to vote for? Because help me to find the person that lines up the most with your biblical values. Um, I know not everyone's a perfect candidate. And maybe they have like one or two things that maybe you don't necessarily agree with. But at least make sure that in the major issues, they are following uh, not what you want, but what the Bible wants, um, to be directed and led by the word of God. We want to follow his voice and follow it. Um, yeah, we want to hear his voice and follow it. The Bible says that the sheep know his voice and they obey it. And so if we're his children, we're going to be hearing his voice and we're going to be obeying where he wants us to go, what he wants us to do. And last of all, what I want to say about this is just to, no matter what happens, in this election, this is something that brought a lot of peace in my heart. No matter what happens after this election, we need to know that we have a God that is taking care of us, that He, that we can trust him, and that he is the one who ultimately puts authority in place. Um, you know, maybe someone ends up in the presidential role that we don't necessarily agree with, or in the U.S. Senate, or in the House of Representatives, wherever. Maybe someone gets placed with, and we wouldn't necessarily choose them for ourselves. But if God is saying that that's who he wants to be there, then we need to trust that that is exactly what needs to be happening and that he's going to take care of his children. No matter who is sitting in what position, um, I heard it this way, God is still going to be on the throne after November. <laughs> his church is still going to be alive and active after November. The church has gone through um, martyrdom. That's still happening throughout the world. Um, martyrdom, it's going through persecution. It's gone through so much. And if it has made it through all of those things, it's going to last past November because um, the Lord is within his church. The Lord is within his people. He's not leaving us. He's not forsaking us. Um, I also want to say this is something I also heard that um, our hope is not within who's sitting on that presidential seat. Our hope is within who died on the cross for us. And so if that's where our hope remains, then even when things um, look different in the world, we can still trust because he is our anchor. He is our foundation. He's where we put our trust, and we're not going to put it in a man. We're going to put it in God who's 
it's the Bible says that he's not like a man that he should lie. Um, he is faithful to his promises. He's going to take care of his people. He's going to take care of his remnant. And no matter what happens, I just encourage you just to put your trust in him. Um, during the return, they were talking about how uh, it was like an all-day prayer and fasting thing that they had in Washington. But he was talking about, honestly, like either way the presidential election goes, there's going to be some chaos for a while. <laughs> there's going to be people who, um, if one side wins, there's going to be massive protests like we've never seen before. If another side wins, there's going to be a lot of <laughs> decisions leading us in a very unbiblical um, way of line. And so either way, we have to be putting our hope and our trust in God and knowing that he's taking care of his people and that he's not going to leave us, nor is he going to forsake us. Um, I just want to take this last couple minutes just to tell you that if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, um, if you're hearing all this and you're like, well, how do I even submit biblically to what God's saying? I don't even really know him like that, or I've never really had him as my Lord and Savior. Um, we just want to invite you today to invite him into your heart, to um, let him become the Lord of your life. Let him reign over it. The fact of the matter is that he does so much better with our lives than we ever could. And so we're just going to go ahead and pray that prayer of salvation right now. Um, if you want to repeat after me, Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart and forgive me of all of my sins, the past, the present, the ones that I don't even remember. Lord, you can do so much better with my life than I can. So I ask that you come and you sit on the throne of my heart. Teach me how to live. Guide me in your ways and lead me into the everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, and we're going to do one more prayer. It's going to cover two things. One, I want to just pray for anyone who sent in any prayer requests. Um, and two, I just want to take a moment to pray over our nation. Uh, I really encourage you, be praying for our nation, be fasting for our nation. Um, and let's see God heal our land after, as we submit to him. Um, but God, I come before you. I thank you for every single person who is called on the station today. I thank you um, for their prayer requests, that you are hearing them. You are so present with us. You are not far away. You are not hiding from us. But you are listening to our needs, and you're working on our behalf, even when we can't see it, even when, I can, when we can't feel it. So God, I pray for healing where healing needs to be done. I pray for financial breakthrough where they need financial breakthrough. I thank you that you are moving in their situations, that you're bringing um, restoration back to their households, back to their family. Um, and we love you so much, Jesus. I also just take this moment to pray for our nation, God. Um, I pray that you, um, we submit our voting to you, God, that we are obedient to your word, that we, um, say, we seek what your will is for this election and we follow it. We don't just hear you, but that we obey you as well, God, and that we can see our nation um, be one nation under God once again, God, that we would protect and steward our liberty, our freedom of speech, our freedom of religion, our freedom um, that you have so generously given us, God. And so I thank you so much for our nation. I thank you for our president. I pray for healing over our president in the name of Jesus, that you continue to bring that healing to him and his family's life. You continue to give him the wisdom on how to guide us and how to lead us. And we bless him. We bless him and we bless his family in the name of Jesus. Um, amen. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, so much for being here today. We are so thankful that you chose to tune in. You didn't have to tune in today, but you did listen to all this. Um, and I really encourage you, please vote. It's too late to register to vote, but if you've already registered, please um, remember to go to the polls and vote. Early voting starts October 13th. Um, if you don't have, if you prayed the prayer of salvation with us and you don't have a church to go to yet, please feel free to join our church. It's 820 North Rainer. Um, and our service is at 1030 on Sundays. If you want to give it a call, it's 915-544-7400. I hope you have a great day today, and we'll see you next week. Bye. God bless you.